Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on which part of the globe you are right now. My name is Joanna Go. I am from Monash University, Malaysia. I am very happy to be part of this international forum. Today, I'm going to share with you my research topic that is untitled, Unraveling the Benefits of Mangrove-Derived Streptomyces as Probiotics in Aquaculture. This is part of my PhD project. This topic is rather unusual because it is not clinically related at the first sense. However, this topic will be important for all of us here. Let me start by providing you with the context. The global population has always been on the rise. Based on the current statistics released by the United Nations this year, the global population is expected to increase to 8.5 billion by 2030 and reaching 9.7 billion by 2050. The question is, will we have enough food for everyone by then? Today, the fisheries and the aquaculture industries have been increasingly recognized for their essential contributions to the global food security and nutrition. Of the overall aquatic productions, over 157 million tons, which is equivalent to about 89%, were used for human consumption. However, the prevalence of moderate to severe food insecurity has been rising since 2014. This is exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, the production and distributions of aquatic food are not without problems. Infectious disease is one of the most important challenges haunting the industry since its inception. For instance, acute hepatopancreatic necrosis disease, or AHPND in short, is one of the common issues haunting the shrimp industry today. When affected by this disease, the shrimps will demonstrate an empty gut, an atrophied and pure hepatopancreas, and also demonstrate a reduced feeding pattern. Most importantly, this disease can cause up to 100% mortality within a very short time frame, thus wiping out the entire batches of production. The risk of the disease is highest immediately after stocking, and hence this disease has also been called the early mortality syndrome or EMS in short in the past. This disease is first reported in China back in 2009, and now this disease has been affecting many different countries around the globe, which is recognized as a global pandemic. The causative agent for this disease has been recognized as Vibro parahemolyticus, which is a gram-negative rod. Disease pathogenesis begins when the pathogen Vibro parahemolyticus colonizes the gastrointestinal tract and releases harmful toxin known as PIRA or PIRB, which subsequently leads to cell necrosis and massive sloughing in the gastrointestinal tract. The impact of this disease on the economics of the industry is great. Reports have shown that shrimp's productions in regions affected by this disease has dropped to about 60%. The disease has caused a global loss of 43 billion US dollars to the industry. In the past, farmers have conventionally relied on antimicrobial agents in confronting diseases in farming due to the lack of therapeutic options available. Based on the data gathered by the World Organizations of Animal Health, we can see that antimicrobial agent usage in aquaculture production is very common in many countries around the globe. This table shows the antimicrobial usage in crustacean aquaculture production alone. However, the data could be much more than what is projected due to the common underreported scenario. The impact of antimicrobial usage is great. For instance, the excessive and indiscriminate usage of antimicrobial agent has ruined our reputation as a world exporter. Moreover, excessive antimicrobial agent usage can contribute to the development of antimicrobial resistance. It is indeed alarming when a recent report shows that Vibro is one of the genus showing a high percentage of antimicrobial resistance. It's finally the time to move on to a fun part. Hypothesis is formed when we build a storyline to answer the why, 
and the what. So we ask ourselves these questions. Why is this happening? Why is disease prevalence in current farming system? What is lacking in the system that contribute to diseases? What we can do to overcome this? Here, I would like to share a concept known as the hygiene hypothesis. I believe many of us here will be familiar with this idea. This hypothesis was first proposed in 1989. Today, it has been used to explain the rise of allergies and autoimmune diseases. This hypothesis states that the rise of these diseases is due to the much more than rampant cleanliness in our surrounding. However, we also don't want to dampen our immune system so much in a non-specific way to be healthy. It does not mean that we need to be dirty to be healthy. Continuous research in this area has helped us better understand this idea. Increasing epidemiological, experimental, and molecular evidence suggests a slightly different hypothesis. Instead of the exposure to harmful pathogens, an early exposure to friendly microbes were thought necessary to train our body to respond appropriately to stimuli. So this leads us back to our research topic. The question is, would our modern farming be a too clean environment for the shrinks? Or more specifically, would there be any friendly microbes that is naturally present in the natural habitat of these species that is currently absent in our farming system? With that in mind, we went back to the nature to look for answers. This is a picture of the mangrove forest. The mangrove forest is the natural habitat and the nursery ground for many shrimps, fishes, and other species of animals. Besides, the unique environment of the mangrove forest caused by the constant changes in tidal gradient and salinity may contribute to a unique population of microbes residing in the soil. Among the myriad microbes, we plan to specifically look at streptomyces. Streptomyces is a unique genus that resembles the intermediate between bacteria and fungi. They are characterized by a distinct branching filamentous morphology. More importantly, Streptomyces is a good candidate as it is recognized as a prominent antibiotic lead. In fact, more than 80% of the actinomyces antibiotics were derived from Streptomyces. Moreover, it is a prolific metabolite producer. This is supported by genome analysis, which shows that a big proportion of the genes clusters were involved in metabolite synthesis. Therefore, my main research objective is to explore the potential applications of mangrove-derived streptomyces as probiotics in aquaculture use against Vibro parahemolyticus. To do this, firstly, I need to identify the strain that has an antagonistic effect against Vibro parahemolyticus and characterize that strain. Secondly, I need to determine the probiotics properties of the strain and optimize their production as probiotics. Thirdly, I will need to identify what are the other health benefits of these probiotics in shrimps. The idea to introduce streptomyces as probiotic in aquaculture is very much similar to the concept of us taking the yogurt. This is a rough idea of how probiotics may work. Upon ingestions, the probiotics bacteria colonizes our gastrointestinal tract. They're present to up the space and competitively exclude the pathogens from residing at our gut lining. Besides, some probiotics bacteria are capable of secreting useful metabolites that can help inactivate the pathogens, just to name a few potential mechanisms of how probiotics work. Introducing this probiotic as an innovative feed ingredient is also in line with the priority areas for the transformations for Asia aquaculture. We came up with a review paper on this idea and it has been selected as the cover image for this journal. Next, I will share with you the methodology I use for this project. For this project, we use the strains isolated from the soil sample collected from a previous project. I started with the cross strip assay to determine the antagonistic effect of the strain against Vibro pathogen. To do this, I strip the streptomyces strain perpendicular to the Vibro strain, and then I measure the zone of inhibition to determine the antimicrobial potential of the strain. This is a rapid method for me to quickly identify the potential strains before I can proceed to the next step. This will help to save cost and time. 
also conducted a co-culture assay to confirm the antagonistic effect of the strain against Vibrio. To do this, I inoculate both the streptomyces and the Vibrio in a tube and incubate them. After that, I plate the suspension on a selective agar to quantitate the amount of Vibrio remaining to determine the antagonistic effect. Next, Congorate was used as an indicator for hydrophobicity, which is an important characteristic for bacteria to colonize the gastrointestinal tract. In this essay, we want to determine whether the supernatant of the probiotics can reduce the hydrophobicity of the Vibrio pathogen. When this happens, the Congo rate will dissociate from the Vibrio surfaces and enter into the water solution. This will change the intensity of the water, which can be captured using a spectrophotometer. I need to figure out how I can optimize the culture of these strains so that I can mass produce them as probiotics. And in phase 5, I rely a lot on searching the literature so that I can find the best road, dosage, and duration to introduce the probiotics to the animal. After the durations of treating the shrimps with probiotics, I will conduct a challenge test so that I can determine the effectiveness of the streptomyces probiotics in protecting the shrimps against Vibrio parahemolyticus infections. I will also assess the changes to the water quality. Some other data I plan to gather from these experiments are the survival rate of the shrimps, the growth rate of the shrimps, the changes to the immune function of the animals, and the changes to the gut microbiome. And we have finally come to the most exciting part, the results! Through this project, we have identified a strain that shows very strong inhibitions against Vibro parahemolyticus pathogen. We have named this strain as Monash University Malaysia 195J. We have deposited this strain in a culture collection center in China and recently filed a patent. However, this status is still pending. Our co-culture assay result is equally reassuring. When we add 0.5% of the probiotics, we can reduce the Vibro population by about 28%. And when we increase the dose to 1%, we can achieve a reduction of Vibrio population to about 35%. For the Congo rate mining assay, I hope these images rings a bell. We can see a trend as we increase the supernatant concentration, the percentage of Congo rate binding reduces, and this reduction becomes significant at 25% and beyond. This may imply that as we introduce the probiotics, there will be a less percentage of Vibrio that can attach to the gastrointestinal tract, hence causing the diseases. With the challenge test, we witnessed firsthand how Vibrio pathogen can kill the entire batch of the stream within a very short period of time. However, with probiotics treatment, we managed to increase the survival rate of the shrimps by more than 50%. This efficacy is almost comparable to the treatment with Flophanical antibiotics. As for the water quality assessment, we can see that Probiotics administrations can significantly reduce the nitrate concentration, which helps to improve the water quality. The results are still limited as we are still at the last phase of collecting data. However, I'm happy to share with you a prototype product that we created from this project. We name it as Farmmate S1. If interested, you may scan this QR code to visit our website to find out more. We recently showcased our product in the International Invention, Innovations and Technology Exhibition and our team was awarded gold and the Best Invention Award in the exhibition. Through this research, we hope to help control Vibrio infections, reduce antibiotics use, improve the quality and quantity of aquaculture produced, and most importantly, provide an environmental-friendly, sustainable, and affordable therapeutic options for the aqua farming industry. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my supervisors and lecturers for their continuous guidance and support for the success of this project. I would like to thank the lab technicians and also lab mates from the MBDD and BMAX research groups. I would like to also thank my industrial collaborators from GK Aqua. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for your kind attention in listening to my presentations. I hope this presentation has benefited you in one way or another. All the best to you. Thank you.